Thanks for watching Afternoon Live. What if you could train your brain to feel more happiness? Neuroscientists have identified simple practices we can all try to rewire our brains to prioritize the positive. Here to explain, we welcome back Stanford professor, professor, physician, and author of Gain Without Pain, Dr. Greg Hammer. It's great to see you. Always great to see you too, Hannah. So tell me about this neurological link between meditation and happiness. I know you've studied this so much. Sure. The fact is, Hannah, that our brains are wired in particular ways that evolved over perhaps even hundreds of thousands of years, and they evolved in ways which helped us survive, uh, but not to be happy. So what does that mean? Well, for example, if we're very wary of our environment and if our brains are always scanning what's going on around us and thinking about the, the past, uh, what did we do wrong? How can we change it? How can we keep ourselves safe? Thinking about the future, what's the worst thing that might happen so I can avoid it? These are sort of our default ways of thinking. This is the way that our brains are wired. People have actually described this default mode network and by virtue of that network, we're, we're fairly negative and have a difficult time being present in our thoughts. Um, the good news is that our brains have this amazing quality called neuroplasticity. So we can change the way we think. We can actually modify our default mode network. How much time does it take to put that into practice and actually feel those positive impacts of, of retraining your brain? It really is something that takes only a few minutes a day uh, and then what happens is we start to reorient the way we think so you know i wrote a book about this game practice it's essentially uh deep slow intentional breathing integrated with a self-guided tour of our gratitude acceptance intention and non-judgment and back to really focusing on the slow deep breathing that activates our parasympathetic nervous system. When we do that just for as little as three minutes, it kind of reorients the way we're thinking. And then when we're violating that by being ungrateful or resisting something uncomfortable, we have a little light bulb moment and we can then reorient our thoughts. So the more we do this, the more we're actually rewiring our brain. But I think the benefits of meditation in this case are really evident almost immediately. Sure, even if it's only a few minutes a day, if you're constantly checking in with yourself, you can just notice it and then get back on the positive path quicker. You mentioned kind of that negativity bias earlier and there was evolutionarily reasons for it. Do you find that a lot of people now don't even realize that this negativity bias exists in all of our brains? Absolutely, I think we're so used to thinking in this way. So for example, we get up in the morning and maybe a part of our body, let's say our knee is bothering us and we think about that as we're getting out of bed and, and then we sort of solidify that neural pattern of thinking about something negative, something that's bothering us. And then pretty soon every day we're getting out of bed and we're having the same neural patterns of thinking. Every day we're thinking of something negative right away even before we get out of bed. And the good news is we can intentionally reorient that. So instead of thinking about the fact that our knee is a little sore, think about all of them miraculous things going on in our body overnight and how wonderful it is to be able to actually get out of bed and start thinking of the positive and just that act alone causes some secretion of dopamine serotonin GABA things that make us feel good and, and goodness begets goodness and positive thoughts beget more positive thoughts that's a great perspective and we've talked before about the end in gain is non-judgment. I always find that to be the toughest part because we're hard on ourselves. Do you yeah. have simple ways to kind of stop that negative self-talk that I think we all kind of can fall into day after day? Absolutely. So one model that I invoke in the gain practice is uh, when we've, we've kind of gotten in touch with our breath, we've gone through gratitude, acceptance, intention, we get to non-judgment. Imagine an image of the Earth apparently suspended in space, one of these beautiful NASA images, and remind ourselves that the Earth really doesn't possess innate qualities of goodness or badness. It's just the planet that it is. It's rather lovely, but it's not good or bad. So it's only logical for us to think, I too am just a person. I'm neither good nor bad. I simply am the person that I am. And again, the more we kind of think of ourselves 
others and the world around us in this way, dropping the judgments, the more we're able to drop the judgment. So this becomes our new way of thinking. And, uh, you know, it's uh, really can be life changing. For sure. And having that less judgment for yourself, you can empathize with other people better. And yeah, goodness begets goodness, like you said. Hey, it was great to see you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Great to see you, Hannah. Again, Dr. Greg's book is Gain Without Pain. We'll have more information on our website at katu.com.